o'clock on Saturday, uh, February the 24th. It is 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and that means it is time for the, uh, the Steam Witness Panel. Uh, I got a whole bunch of the top 20 witnesses and a handful of the backup witnesses to come join us. Um, the, the plan for today is we're going to go start. I'm going to take you all off of... Um, I'm going to take you all off of mute, everybody that's in the channel here with me. Uh, and so you can, you should, if you are looking to, you can unmute yourselves. You can mute yourselves uh, while other people are talking. The plan for today is that we're going to, uh, we're going to start with the highest ranked witness. Uh, actually, we're going to start with Andrew Arkey, who represents Steemit. He is a uh, the director of content right now, and he can go kind of give us a quick update. Uh, some of this will be revisiting the last Steemit blog post, and I'm not exactly sure what else he's going to share today, but Androarchy can give us a, uh, a heads up. Then we're going to go from uh, top of the list down, sort of what we're working on, and um, and then I just have sort of a list of some generic questions. What are the biggest things that we need to work on? What are the issues that are currently in front of you? Uh, how do you spend most of your time? And this is sort of a way to get to know some of the top 20 witnesses. Well, I started rotating in some of the backup witnesses, just like the blockchain does. And uh, just like that, I'm going to drag Nashter in here, or Carl Ganesh. Uh, hopefully his audio is okay to go here too. Uh, Andrarchy, you are currently muted. Can you unmute yourself? And then, um, and when you guys talk, um, I know that in our Discord room, we can see the green light around our name light up and we know who is speaking. The rest of the audience doesn't get to see that. So every time that you talk, uh, it might feel a little repetitive, but uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, just say, hey, this, uh, this is the voice of Ad Agro, or this is the voice of Ad Road, and let me tell you what's up. Uh, and just so everybody knows, this is being recorded and we'll go put this online later. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome the Director of Content from Steemit Inc. Uh, this is Andrarchy. Andrarchy, how are you today? Hey, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for checking in and uh, being a part of the Steam Witness and representing Steemit to just let us know what's going on with the, with the mothership. Uh, well, it, it's my pleasure to be here and among uh, all of these esteemed quasi colleagues. Uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic, of course, you know, uh, but, you know, the witnesses are a hugely important part of this ecosystem and uh, their, you know, their independence is, is interest is awesome. And, uh, you know, I have a ton of respect for everybody, uh, everybody here, really. So I'm happy to be here and of course, the the ordinary, uh, ordinary Steam users. Uh, happy to be among everyone. Yeah, we got a good crowd today. You know, you ping you ping everyone a couple times to a fifteen thousand person server, and you apparently you can gather quite an audience. So, um, <laughs> I'm glad to I'm glad to have so many folks here. There's a number of whales out here. I see Surfer Marley. I see Neoxian, just to get a name a few of them. I'm sure there's more. But, you know, I, we got a good crowd assembled. We got a good uh, batch of witnesses that can go sort of talk us through their projects. Um, the Steemit blog recently put out a, um, an article that sort of was one of the, one of the um, seemed like it was really well received for one, but it was also a nice update about uh, what's going on at Steemit, what, what's being developed. We also had a, a, a Steemit dev um, update about uh, app base. Do you want to, do you want to give us like a quick rundown? You know, this is, despite this being a, a witness panel, a lot of the audience here are still a bunch of minnows. Can you rehash a little bit of what happened over this last week and just kind of give us an update of what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So with respect to the last, uh, steam it blog post, um, that was a post kind of went over the last year and, uh, Discussed kind of how we plan to move forward to be an exhaustive blog. But uh, if you're looking to gain insights into our current thinking and how we look at the last year and how we're trying to learn from the mistakes of the last year to uh, move properly into the future and progress as a company that uh, as um, as the accelerator of the steam, uh, ecosystem, you know, we don't control it, but we help, uh, 
push updates through and help spur the progress. And so what we don't necessarily talk about there, but, but I think it kind of sets the stage for, for understanding it is that we've really, uh, you know, there was a lot of engineering work done over the last year, and, and that was, you know, ob you know, that had to be the critical priority, and, and the organization had to be kind of um, maniacally focused on, on successfully completing uh, those engineering requirements. Uh, and, you know, as much time and energy couldn't be spent finding our voice as a company and uh, understanding, you know, on a high level what our what our mission is and what our purpose is. You know, there were so many practical, critical problems that needed to be solved. And, and the truth is that when you're solving problems that everybody agrees need to be solved, you actually don't really have to put that much thought into, you know, why you do what you do. You just have to execute. And so, but over the course of that year, we definitely have gained those insights. And, and by doing what needed to be done, we've been able to find our voice and, and figure out our vision. And so that post is really just the beginning of us um, exploring uh, and that voice with the community. And so this is gonna be a continual process of us communicating uh, what we're learning and what we're thinking with the community and and we're in a we're in a much better space now uh in in every direction i know within the organization we we all feel really happy about where we are you know people forget about what a volatile year the last year was for everybody in the space and it's a very difficult um environment to be operating a startup in uh, you know, it was a challenging year, but we've gotten through it and we feel way, way stronger than ever. Uh, and so that's, I think, was the undertone of that post is that, you know, there, there's, you know, there's the practical, um, clear statements that we're making in it. But, but I think, I hope part of the reason why the post itself resonated was because that's really what it was communicating was, was all the progress that we've made as a community. As uh, AppBase, uh, I, I can talk a little bit about AppBase. Now that I am mandated to, to focus on making sure that our communications and our, and our content is uh, top notch and regular and consistent and insightful, uh, my, my understanding of the engineering is, is going down rapidly. But effectively, what AppBase is, AppBase is uh, an early stage in what we were previously referring to as the fabric, integral, an integral component to scaling um, the Steam ecosystem. Technically, it's not making Steam D more scalable, as far as I understand doing is it's creating an additional layer of modules on top of steam d on top of the steam blockchain so that when uh services are querying you know the steam database the steam blockchain instead of every service pinging the steam blockchain for every little thing the creation of plugins or modules that contain specific information like vote count or comments or all that stuff that syncs with the Steam blockchain, but it's non-consensus. So it can be efficiently and rapidly updated, and it gives services another thing to query uh, so that the uh, all the queries of all the applications in the Steam ecosystem aren't all pinging the exact same thing uh, for all this different information. And, and instead, it, it's, it's a form of decentralizing the blockchain so that all the services are pinging different plugins that are run more efficiently because they're non-consensus. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, is there anything I missed there? So what, um, so at the, at the water cooler in the company, what do you think, how, how, do, how do the people that are coding this, what are they working on? What are they feeling the pressure to, to create, to deliver? What's the... What's the, I get, I get some of the sense of, um, you know, you feel like you have better alignment and better uh, communication. Where, where is that going for the group now? I mean, there's something like yeah. 35 mm -hmm. devs. What are those, 
what are the 35 devs feeling the pressure to get done what's the wh where's the heat and we're still growing also so you know it, it's going to be more and more over time um and that, that that's a that's a really great question um it, it also highlights like the difference between how we used to work and how we're starting to work now and really what Harry is doing as our, as our new CTO that's really awesome to see is that we used to work, where's the pressure? What do we need to do? It was, um, you know, it was reactionary for, for good reason. But now what's really great to be seeing is that Harry is really implementing agile methodology. And so instead of it being this reactionary, like what needs to get done now, instead everything is planned out in terms of epics and sprints. And, and if anybody wants to learn more about how we are operating, you can feel free to look into agile methodology because we're really um, just doing what works, what is established within the startup and software communities, what we know works. And so instead of having it be like, what do we need to do now? It's like, is it in the epic? Is it in the sprint? Are we getting the sprint done? Things up into really, really small parts and everybody just executing and being held accountable to uh, whether they're uh, accomplishing the, the tasks that have been assigned to them, you know, usually in the form of pull requests on GitHub. And so it's much more of a methodical, regular, consistent approach, um, which is going to enable us over the longer term to be able to more accurately forecast when we're going to be putting out features so that when we say something like we're going to launch SMTs, we can we can actually put an accurate range on when it'll take because we'll break it up into epics, stories. And so we know how long it takes us to execute sprints. We know what percentage of the time we actually execute sprints on time. We know how many sprints are in an epic and then we can actually give you accurate predictions. So the, the pressure on us now is not so much in terms of what we're executing on. We know what we have to do. That's something we mentioned in the post. You know, we got to finish improving signups. We got to finish communities. Uh, we got to finish tokens. And, uh, and, then, and then as we do that, we've got a lot of stuff in the backlog that we know people want. So um, it's more the pressure is more around building out these systems, building out these processes and executing on becoming a serious, large, cohesive because like that old strategy, you know, may very well work extremely well when you're talking about a 10 to 15 person team. The problem is that we're growing and we want to keep growing. And so at this critical stage in our growth, what we really need to focus on is not individual um, individual products as much as the processes and systems that we're using so that we can execute on our projects and and the smaller components of those projects do you do you want to talk a little bit about your role change so you're now the the director of content what is the director of content do how what is the what is the scope of your role and how is that role going to impact um how you guys either communicate with the the active steam community that exists today versus where we're going in the next i don't know uh year and the sort of broader non-users that we'd like to be users what, what is your role in this how do you um you know what's your vision what's your plan and what what's you know director of content at a company like this what, what's even the job description <laughs> uh, well, um, that's, a, that's a great question. The way that I'm looking at it is that I'm in charge of telling Steemit's story to the world. And so that involves telling our story to the community. It involves telling our story to uh, non-community members. It involves creating and videos uh, and scripts for those videos, uh, articles to be hosted on steamit.com, articles to be featured in external pu publications. Um, the production of all of those materials and ensuring that they're consistent, uh, they're part of a larger uh, and consistent story that is maximally compelling. Do you want to? And uh, a big part. 
Hold on, that's that's a great line. Do you want to tell us? Can you give us the the sound bite of what is that story? I mean, what, one of the things that I'm thinking of is that people have had. I, I've I've listened to I don't know maybe 30 people have different ideas of like you get to the landing page you're a new member and it says money talks and your voice is worth something and everybody's got a statement about that what what are you what are you do you have a sense of what the core message is um, does that core message shift from from entity to entity or person to person is there a, do you think it's a one size fits all do you have a um, are you going to segment it to different parts of your audience? Imagine active bloggers, active merchants, active developers. Like you just you just put it out there of hey, we gotta we gotta make sure that we have the message right, or we're 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 talking about ourselves in the best way possible. Uh, you've had this job for a week. Do you have it all figured out, or at least mm -hmm. where, ah, where, totally. where 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 are you going? Totally. Okay. Where are you going with this? We, we're good. We got it all figured out. You know, uh, I can't, I, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So uh, these are great questions. Um, my, my you know, a big part of what I'm doing right now, what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks is uh, developing the strategy and the systems around this. And actually, uh, I'm designing it to uh, parallel roughly the agile methodology. Um, but that's not really the question you asked uh, to answer the, the specific question that you asked. Um, the way we have to, I think that we have to approach it on, on a high level, and, uh, and, and this is part of the strategy, is that you, you, you have to start in the broadest possible terms, and then you can narrow it down based on demographics. And so you do have to start at the highest level story, and uh, that story does have to be uh, unified uh, across the organization. And I do believe that because of our unique circumstance within the, the STEAM ecosystem and because we're all really STEAMians and we're all uni united by our stake in STEAM, um, that, that our vision and our story has to be aligned with the vision and the story of the community as a whole. And so it's, uh, you know, and that can only be done by, by interacting with the community and understand. And I think that's why uh, the people within the organization felt comfortable having a former community member and the former community person being in, being in charge of the content strategy because it has to be efficiently aligned with what the community feels and believes. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and if it's not, it would have to be changed. Now, that being said, we have established our high level story. Uh, you know, that's that's our vision of tokenizing the web. Uh, you know, that's what we want to do on the most basic, basic level. You know, at the end of the day, everything we do comes down to, is this going to accelerate the adoption of cryptocurrencies within, within existing and future applications? Um, and we've, you know, this is what makes our tech so compelling is that it powers uh, internet applications that exist. It's the only protocol sufficiently fast and sufficiently scalable to support applications like DTube, like DLive, like Utopian, like Steemit.com, obviously. And so that fundamentally comes down to tokenizing the web. From there, you, you do have to break it down, you know, so like for the content department, how do we, how do, you know, that's the, the tokenizing the web. That's, that's the broader vision for, for everything basically. Um, but for the, for the content department, right? Well, what's our story? Why do we exist? Why do we get up in the morning? Why do we work late at night? And the way I put that is that our job is to tell the story how we're tokenizing the web, why we're tokenizing the web, why this is important, why this is going to make things better. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and there's some, there's more complicated aspects to it, but you know, at, at, at the highest level, that's what we're looking to do. I think the other point I want to make is that what we're coming to terms with as an organization, uh, is that we are is advocates for steam blockchain adoption. We're not a classical company the word we're not looking to close sales we're not looking to do the stuff that most sales or marketing organizations or 
even for-profit organizations are looking to do. We love STEAM, we're STEAM advocates, even smart media tokens. The reason why we're developing them is because they increase the flexibility and the utility of the STEAM blockchain by an order of magnitude, by giving entrepreneurs all these additional opportunities for raising capital, for generating revenue, for monetizing their platforms. And so that's what drives us as an organization. It's very important that that drive all the sub organizations within the larger organization. And it's very important that, that all of these organizations fall, you know, are, are, are in touch with the ultimate organization, which is the decentralized autonomous organization we refer to as the steam blockchain. Um, so I don't, I don't always share the background in, in these things, but I've been in sales and marketing for large um, publishing companies for like the past decade. And that's actually, to me, that sounds like a really healthy vision. Uh, and just talking, how you're talking about that, that sounds great to me. Um, I'm, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, that's great. I, I, I don't want to be in a position to rip my Of course, my we're working this out and, you know, we, we're, we're the, the important, you know, one of the questions you asked, I, I want to touch on, you know, uh, uh, the nature of Steemit.com, the nature of Steemit, the best way to communicate and engage and interact with the community is to put out frequent content and have people comment on it. Yeah. And, you know, put out content that welcomes that feedback and welcomes that interaction uh, and then engage with it in the comments. And so through this process, all of this stuff may very well change over time. Um, but that itself is part of the strategy uh, and why content is so important and why, as an organization, we are rallying around the idea that now is the time to uh, to diversify out of focusing entirely on engineering. We are still 100 percent in an engineering company. You know, we're a protocol company. We better be focusing on engineers. And at the end of the day, I work for the engineers. I view my job as supporting the engineers and telling the community and the broader world of third party developers or really just developers, open source developers, uh, what our engineers are doing, what they're planning. And actually, we've definitely got, you know, Definitely subscribe to follow the Steemit blog and Steemit dev posts. Of course, the Steemit dev posts are going to be a bit more technical in nature, but uh, definitely follow those because uh, there, there's going to be more more coming on those channels. All right. Uh, well, Andrarki, thank you for coming on to the show. I want to get to the uh, to the witnesses that create such a wonderful uh, opening and some talking points for us to sort of share around, talk about, uh, see what parts we agree with and what we might disagree with. Um, from what I've seen in the community, there's actually a lot of alignment with uh, the things that Steemit is working on. Those uh, are a lot of the things that I know uh, community members are working on. Sometimes I think the only one that's missing that's from the, um, from the vision statement might be some like UI, UX things. Um, but otherwise, it seems like you guys are really on a track that that is um, that last post was honestly one of the better communications that I've seen um, gave you know I, I I already like and love this place a lot but it certainly filled me with a lot more confidence in terms of um, just feeling good about knowing where the team is heading knowing where the you know I have an investment and a lot of the folks here have an investment in steam and knowing that the company is working on these things and communicating about them well goes a long way to help me feel less anxious about uh, having a large stake sitting there and um, mm. just lets me keep operating as if this thing is going to keep going to the moon. And uh, mm. that that certainly makes makes this whole uh, operation, this gig seem a lot more steady and stable. So thank you. I'm assuming that you are involved in that. And uh, thank you for working on that. And thanks for uh, checking in with the with the steam witness panel yeah my pleasure and absolutely we are working on things like ui and ux and the hiring up in those arenas too i mean we're looking to make everything much better awesome we appreciate everybody hanging with us and sticking with us through this through this uh volatile year as we said in the post but uh the next year is going to be bigger and better awesome 
All right, Anjarki, thanks for checking in with us. Um, I'd like to go switch to the witness and the elected witness panel uh, discussion now. And um, so I want to go do this in descending order of, um, of what your witness rank is. I guess I should pull up uh, something that's tracking it to make sure I have the latest here. But uh, I want to go start with Tim Cliff. Uh, Tim, would you give us just, you got to please, I, I want to remind all the witnesses again, please, uh, please make sure that you state your name. The, uh, the audience won't know who's talking unless you state your name and, um, and just give us a, a brief intro and tell us what you're working on. And then, um, you know, maybe like a one minute thing here, and then we can dive into some of the questions of, you know, what do the different witnesses think are the most important thing on the, the ecosystem right now? What should we be paying attention to? Uh, and so on and so forth. So if I may, Tim, I'd love for you to, to kick us off and, um, you know, just introduce yourself and uh, tell us, just give us like a one minute background so we know how you got to where you are and what, what it is that you generally work on. Okay, sounds good. Uh, my name is Tim Cliff. First of all, can people hear me? Yeah, they sound great, Tim. Okay, uh, so I've been a witness for almost or around a year now, and my role has kind of shifted. I kind of see my job as trying to identify where the most important things for me to focus on are and spending my time on those. So my role has kind of shifted a lot during my witness career. Uh, the main projects that I'm currently focused on right now are the one of the moderators for the Steemit, ha Steemit chat help room. Uh, where a lot of the new members come and ask questions and basically get help uh, getting familiar with the website. Uh, behind, I do a lot of behind the scenes work as far as uh, discussing various protocol changes with other witnesses and community members and the dev team. Uh, I also have been doing some exchange outreach work. I am also working on some changes to the Steam dev portal, uh, which is basically a tool for developers to come and start writing applications for Steam. So I've been spending a lot of time on app-based testing. Yeah, that one sounds awesome, Tim. I have a I have a friend of mine that um, he works for a uh, internet search engine, and he said, oh, "Look, I want to go write and work for Steam and go build something." And he said, uh, "I have no idea where to start." So having some of those tools in a in a in a better, more organized spot to go help. Um, successful developers turn into successful steam developers that does sound uh, extremely important as this community levels up um all right so i guess um uh, i'm up next at uh position 10. so most people know me here i'm at this is the voice of agroad um, you're sitting in the Peace, Abundance, and Liberty Network, which is a Discord channel. Uh, I believe that today we passed 15,000 members. I shouldn't do it. I, I gotta, I gotta do the quick check. I probably shouldn't, but uh, let me go dive into here. If I type in T exclamation point server, no, I'm sorry, we passed the 14,000. I guess we, uh, we, we get, we went through a, a prune and we got rid of some of the uh, people that might have fraudulent transactions or something like that um, but we went through a prune and now we have 14,000 steamians that are in here um, and so the uh, I don't know like a lot of my time is spent uh, working on these radio shows I have um, I'm doing my best to you know as a as a witness I have three goals I want to spread the values of peace abundance and liberty I want to help the steam ecosystem grow and I want to help train and retain minnows on the platform um, and there's lots of different ways to go do that. The, the trick is to go figure out how do we, how do we help folks? How do we get them started? How do we, um, grow this place in a sustainable way? So those are the things that, um, I'm working on. It's a mix of, uh, communication. I have a sales and marketing background. So I think of this in ways of like, how do I communicate to the outside world? And honestly, I feel like one of the best contributions I can make is is this exact meeting, this exact group of uh, we have a we've built a gathering place. Let's get the witnesses here. And in no way, shape, or form is it my job to like direct them or anything. I I just want I just want them to like uh, talk about what it is that they're working on, talk about what they're what they're doing, so that we as 
citizens and we as um, you know members of the steam community can sort of know hey these are these people that are representing us here's what they're working on here's who i should vote for uh here are the benefits that are coming from having a system that involves witnesses and and so on um so anyways my the number one project that i'm known for is the peace abundance and liberty network and all the and the minnow support project that's within that uh running a very long contest and um for the re-steam contest and helping to build the community of uh, 14,000 steamians. Uh, it looks like we got uh, Carl Ganache or Carl Nash uh, finally got the audio fixed. Um, Carl represents the Curie. Um, many of the minnows that are in here have been curied before. Um, so uh, I think that it, it's, it's going to be a nice uh, surprise to be able to go talk to somebody from Curie. Uh, Carl, are you there? Can you can you check in through audio? Hi, Agro. That's a pleasure to be here. And we've had some uh, difficulties, so I'm all you could hear that. Yeah, I can hear you. It is a little. It's a little bit broken up, but um, it is audible. And so, um, do you want to do you want to give us a quick background of what is Curie and uh, why does it have a witness and what is the what is the primary purpose or project of what you guys are building? Sure. So Curie is a community curation organization, and we're also a community witness. And I'll speak to what it means to... Oop, I, my finger slipped off the push to talk button there. Uh, Curie is a community curation organization and a community witness. And what it means uh, to be a community curation organization so first off curation is trying to discover uh, undiscovered content and the primary goal of curie is to discover exceptional content by authors who have been producing good posting but have not received major reward and you know in a nutshell i guess we're trying to to make it so that the proof of brain is not just an empty slogan and that good content does indeed have a chance of being rewarded just because it's good content and not just because uh, you know you've you've embedded yourself in the social network and have a you know are friends with a whale or already have a high enough stake that you can self vote your content up curie will give a vote to good and or rather exceptional content and give a big boost up to these newer authors and hopefully many of these authors will then choose to take that reward that they received and uh, power it up and so we're giving promising authors a stake to use the platform and there's also the aspect of us being a community witness what being a community witness means is that all the witness decisions are actually taken by the larger Curie community so when hard fork decisions or any other uh, witness related decisions are taken up the top curators and Curie reviewers and the witness operator come together. We talk over the issues. If we need to take some time to do research, we do that. And then we take a vote. And so as a witness, we our decisions are made by a number of uh, stakeholders within Curie. And I should point out that Curie has low stakeholder members that are voting. We have medium stakeholder members. And we've got some you know high, high uh, stakeholders, too. So it's kind of a diverse um, a diverse set of stakeholders, and we're trying to make decisions as the best for a steam forward. So I guess in, in a nutshell, that's what Curie is. All right. Thank you for that. I want to go move on to Furion. Uh, Furion, do you want to give us a quick heads up on, first, just make sure that you introduce us with your voice and uh, tell us what it is that you're working on and give us like a little introduction. Yeah. Hello, I'm Furion, and I'm a developer. Uh, in the last year, I've been uh, stamping out a lot of projects. I've got about a half a dozen projects um, of variable quality and success. Two most notable ones were the uh, Steam Python library and Steam Data. Uh, Steam Data is a database layer for the Steam blockchain, which allows uh, developers to easily query historic data and enhance their apps. Um, and in certain use cases, for example, for search and aggregations and stuff like this, it can be orders of magnitude faster uh, than trying to go to SteamD directly. Um, and then in this year, uh, for the first half of this year, uh, my plan is to um, pay the um, 
the debt, technical debt, uh, and do a lot of maintenance on, on these projects, uh, make them a little bit more uh, production ready. Uh, so for the first two months of this year, uh, I've redone Steam data. So now it's uh, really uh, quite reliable. Uh, and my plan is to also to reintroduce uh, SBDS and Hive, um, which are MySQL based uh, database layers made by Steamit for the Steam blockchain and for the upcoming communities. Um, and I've also, um, I also plan to release two apps in the next six months. Uh, but after after they're um, fully developed and tested. Uh, so I don't want to uh, release any more prototypes. Uh, I'll just focus on building higher quality uh, uh, infrastructure uh, from now on. Can you can you give us any sense of how many people are reliant on these or how many tools are reliant on these? Uh, my my experience here is quite a quite a number are reliant on the uh, tools that you've built. Uh, I apologize. I haven't heard anything uh, that you've said. Uh, my connection seems to be breaking up. How, how many people are relying on uh, Steam data for, for, as an example, or the Python library? Do you know how many people use it? Uh, the Python library has uh, cumulatively, there are two forks. Uh, there's around 100 stars on GitHub. I have no idea how many people use it. Uh, and as far as Steam data goes, there's no monitoring or rate limiting, so I'm not tracking anything. Uh, but the last I've checked, there are around 200 uh, open connections at any time uh, to the database. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the the products that you've put together seem to have been the bedrock tool for many of the applications that have been built. So uh, it's hard to imagine that there's a lot of um, tools that are calling up a database or um, any of the data that's been put into a, a database for Steam that aren't using some of the tools that you built. So. Uh, thank you for those um, contributions to the system. So that was that was Furion. Uh, next up, I, I don't want to get this wrong. Um, I'm going to go introduce some of the, the backup witnesses that I've invited here. Um, two in particular, we have uh, Cervantes, uh, who is represented by um, the, it's P. Garco. I, I'm not, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that. Sorry about that. But um why don't you, Cervantes, why don't you go and introduce yourself and the witness and uh, and say what the project is and, and what you guys are working on. Yeah, hi, uh, Pablo here. Um, yes, quite difficult to pronounce my name, so I'm sorry for that. It was actually a mistake when I uh, when I first <laughs> joined the platform back uh, in July 2016. Um, mm, let me let me check one minute because I'm do, I'm having problems with my. Con you actually sound pretty good to me right now, so you're coming in clear. Sorry, no. Uh, actually, I was I was uh, having a problem. I was just tipping with the uh, with uh, a character, and I was writing on the screen at the same time. So I just changed the uh, activate by voice. Uh, I put a F F one keyboard. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Pablo, uh, I'm running the backup with the witness Cervantes, as you know. So I'm in, for myself, I have a background in computer engineering. I'm already a couple of years on this on this field. So I am already 41 years old. Um, the yes, and we are actually the the Cervantes witness is uh, also a sort of a community witness, as you know. We launch it. Uh, uh, with the aim of supporting actually of creating uh, and building up the Spanish community at the Steemit because back uh, in, uh, at the beginning uh, there was uh, almost no people writing uh, writing Spanish content at all and then we we uh, we just well, we, we decided to begin uh, improving that um, and uh, yes and now we, we 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 see how the Spanish tag is uh, has been a con uh, constant uh, tag in the on the on the trending on the main page of steamit.com so it's doing quite well i think i don't know i don't have the numbers of uh, of the official uh, statistics of the website but uh, i know uh, it should be around 15 to 16000 spanish speaking users uh, on our on our project uh, so we uh, so we we have we are maintaining also quite quite successfully uh, a discord server so we are we are now um, uh, reaching the five 
by thousand five four thousand five hundred users on our Discord, so all Spanish speaking, which is quite quite amazing. So we have um, more or less. Um, last week we have two hundred new users coming into the into into the Discord server, and we are doing all kind of things similar to what you guys are doing here, only just in Spanish. Um, so we. We are uh, actually the, the, the one of the main activities we are doing, of course, is also curation. So we are trying to 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 give uh, to use our voting power to more or less hundred hundred posts a day, um, where we are rewarding uh, new users or existing good users with more or less twenty twenty dollars a day. Um, so which is quite good. So to to keep incentivizing the, the users to keep writing in Spanish, to, uh, knowing that um, yes, it's. Uh, Spanish-speaking ways are not the, the more useful ones, so we need our uh, our help to to focus their their voting power on good content. Um, we are we we are also a, like a, a cleaning community, a cleaning project which is called uh, uh, Linfe. So we have six people working on this team, uh, like similar to what uh, Steam cleaners are doing. Actually, together we, with them, trying to fight plagiarism, which is always a problem. We just created the the last um, the last month like we call a collaborative cleaning uh, group. So with 20 to 30 collaborators from different other Spanish communities, which are helping fighting it. Um, one of the other things we are doing, we have uh, we have already launched our, uh, this this week our 21st volume of our so-called Cervantes magazine, which is uh, also a community written magazine with different sections uh, if you go to our blog you will say you will see it we are actually translating it into english sorry for the bad english of the translation but we are not native so we are trying to to translate our magazine so that you can have an insight of what is happening in the, and what the, our writers are writing so um one of the other things we are massively doing are uh, supporting meetups uh, so real people uh, joining uh, together, having fun, uh, drinking beer and playing guitar um, to, to to talk about um, about Stimit. Uh, so just, just this morning, uh, I was uh, connecting live to a meetup at the University of Barquisimeto in in, in Venezuela. So it was organized by, by uh, some uh, teachers there, and they asked me to 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 jump in and say hello and greet the, the the audience of more than 40 people there so it was quite good they were guys and message it's quite so it's important uh, thing that we don't need to uh, forget is that um, the average income for, of a, a teacher a university teacher in venezuela is more or less four dollars a month Therefore, if we support a meetup with a reward of thirty to forty dollars, uh, it will mean that they will be able to to do quite amazing things just with uh, with a little bit a little bit of of, of uh, uh, steam inflation. So and that's a uh, that's a quite quite in, uh, amazing thing to do to support the people uh, living in, in South America, especially in Venezuela. Is the uh, it, are you focused anywhere geographically, or is it any is it Spanish language everywhere, including uh, Spain, for example, or is this mostly yes. focused so in are, South America? So we are, so we don't, we don't, we are, let's say, a, a language community project. So, so we we don't have any geographical location with people from from all over the world. Uh, actually, I'm I'm Spanish, uh, based in Germany, actually, but I'm Spanish, born in Spain. Um, and we have people in Venezuela, where people in, in Colombia, where people in, in Mexico, users in Uruguay, in Argentina. So it's, uh, it's actually a quite a quite potential user base who are slowly beginning to join to the community. So it's um, yes, but uh, yes, we are let's say a language community and not geographical or political community. Let's say, but actually, I I actively uh, try to avoid to not put any any frontiers um, on, on our user base, let's say. Okay. Mm -hmm. all, right. all right. Thank you for that introduction, Pablo, uh, from yes. Cervantes. I want to go ask uh, Exile. Exile, um, you represent the Block Brothers Witness. Uh, do you want to go tell us about some of the projects that you're working on and, um, you know, give us a little introduction to what you're doing for, for the Steam ecosystem? Hello, this is Exile. Um, you best know me, I guess, on the platform as uh, 
as a vlogger, I vlog about the uh, Steam blockchain and I try to educate as much people as I can about the uh, Steam blockchain and what's going on and I give my own view about it. I also run a live blog on Steamit and that's what I do personally. Uh, I'm a member of our witness, which is Block Brothers. We consist of uh, four people, uh, Echo, SGRG3 and Benny Rex, and we all have our unique uh, skill set. So Echo is a designer, Sergio of SGRG3 is our uh, Apple consultant and uh, he helps us with feedback, gives us new ideas. Uh, and we have uh, our star, it's called Benny Rex, and he's our developer. And that's actually what we do as a witness. We are mainly focusing on apps and tools. So we've built some cool stuff so far. Uh, one of the things is a nozzle, which is a small RPC client that uh, well developers can use. We built a voting bot that's open source and on GitHub, and it's the cool feature of that voting bot, I guess, is that you can select uh, the problem I had with Steam Voter, for instance, when I was still using it, was that I uh, couldn't say I want to vote for a user one time a day, even though they post four times. Uh, that's possible with our voting bot. But I guess we're best known for Steamify, which is a notification app for the Steam blockchain for iOS. And the cool thing about Steamify is that you can add more than one user. So you can add yourself and then you get notified if somebody replies to your post or if you get mentioned somewhere, but you can also add other users so you can add your friends so that you can see that they made a new post or uh, for instance, you can add net. So if you want to know if net says anything somewhere on the blockchain, then you get notified if he speaks somewhere on the blockchain. And that's really cool. Uh, it's only for iOS so far. We are, uh, well, we have hired a developer uh, to build a Android version for us. And we're paying uh, him from the earnings we made with our witness. So that's really cool. And it's being developed. We don't have an ETA yet, uh, but that is uh, also coming. And at the moment, we are working on something called Steam Turbine, which is a early notification warning system for Steam witnesses. And what it does is it's an, uh, a service that checks your witness server and if it sees that it's out of sync or that it's turned off, it will tell the blockchain to switch to a backup server. And if that backup server is also switched off, then it will tell the blockchain that you don't want to be rotated in for a while so that you don't miss any blocks. And that's really cool. And the moment something is wrong with your witness service, you will get notified on Telegram or via email or whatever you want. And then, well, you can do something about it. And that is being released, hopefully, in the next month and it will also be open source and usable for every witness out there and yeah that's what we're doing so we're ma mainly focusing on apps and tools and uh, well we're having a lot of fun at the moment all right well thank you exile um so that's a good introduction to everybody uh that gave us a heads up on what steamit was working on heads up on some of what all these uh various witnesses are working on the um you know, Tim, do you want to do you want to kick us off and let us know, you know, what are, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see on the blockchain right now? What what should the community be aware of? Um, you know, what give us give us some problems that you think um, you could either use some manpower to solve or that we need to work on or um, what what's on your brain or what might keep you up at night that you're thinking about? All right, here's a here's what we got to focus on next. Well, I'd say the three biggest problems that I see in front of me are ones that I also see solutions being worked on. So I'm, I'm not necessarily being kept at, up at night for those. And those would be uh, efficient signups, uh, scalability of the blockchain, fair distribution of rewards, and getting noticed. Um, I know that the dev team is working very hard on improving the signups also know they're working very hard on scalability of the blockchain and as far as and getting rewarded i know that's probably one of the biggest issues for community members and i see communities and smts as being a huge help with both of those so i'm very excited for that that the community can help with uh one of the new projects that i just started up uh it's kind of a work in progress is called my uh, steam shills contest and so a shill is basically a cryptocurrency term for people who kind of go out and talk positively about the projects that they're interested in. 
And that's one thing that I think all of us in the community can be doing more of, which is basically getting the word out about how awesome Steam is and how we're a revolutionary blockchain and everybody should be taking a look at us. Yeah. And one thing to emphasize, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, I, if I'm having frank conversation with people, you know, we started with a bit of a rough reputation of, you know, when we, I went back and looked at the, the term ninja mind to try to figure out where that came from. And, you know, Dan and Ned were trying to create this blockchain and when they wanted to release it, but not do a formal ICO. And so one of the ways that they could do this was release it to everybody through mining, but they didn't want everybody mining. They wanted to have a good solid stake in it. So they gave limited information about how to mine. And then they spent lots and lots of resources mining it to be able to get the stake that they have, to be able to have the input into this community that they have. And in that process, it, it was confusing to some of the uh, investors that were already there. And they were wondering, you know, why are they doing this so differently than the other approaches that have come through? Um, some folks got frustrated because they, they found a bug very early in the code and restarted it. And so they felt like it might have been rigged. Um, and now we have Steemit that does have a large stake in it. And I, I hear in the community that that makes people nervous too. So, you know, a lot of folks that are part of Steam and, and earning rewards and building friends and family and community here and really building a home, they say wonderful things about this place. And then sometimes when we go out into the investor world or into other crypto spaces and say, hey, we're from the Steam blockchain, people get nervous or they, they, they worry it's a scam or they think it's too centralized or a couple other things. So having us as a community try to talk about why we are a good community to be a part of, uh, it, it seems extremely important to me. So, um, you know, thank you for creating that project. Um, how, how do you, how do you hope that will be viewed by other communities that are out there? Well, uh, one thing I want to quick make a distinction on before I go into that is uh, after I launched the contest, I noticed that a lot of people interpret shilling the Steam blockchain and, and shilling the Steam currency as basically getting people to sign up for Steemit and start blogging. And getting new users is extremely important, but there is a distinction between onboarding a user, someone who's going to be creating content and using the platform, and onboarding an investor. Uh, so it, it's a little bit black and white and it oversimplifies things, but in a lot of ways, users produce value and they receive money. Investors are basically looking for value and putting money into the system. And so all of the rewards that we get are there because there are investors who are willing to buy the tokens because they see the value there. And I think one of the things that I'm trying to get us to focus on is we need to sell the value that we're producing as a community to those investors, to those people who are actually considering putting significant amounts of money into the platform, because that's basically how we're going to drive the price of Steam up and get more rewards to continue uh, rewarding the people who are producing that content. Yeah, hundred percent on that. And you know, I, I think we're in a fortunate spot there, right? Because entertainment is one of the most highly valued commodities or things that you could sell in the entire world. Uh, if there's one thing that there seems to be no limit on how much somebody consume, it's it's content that's entertaining. And I and I often think of us as a entertainment exporting uh, digital nation. And so. Uh, hopefully the content that we're creating and the content that is getting curated by groups like OCD, like Curie, like the Minnow Support Project and the curation group that we have, um, hopefully that's helping get content creators established and helping to great, create great content here, which as you're talking about, will help attract those investors here. Yeah, and, uh, so as far as actually con that we have value. I think one of the amazing things that we have here is just the community. And as far as how to sell that to investors, one of the biggest hurdles for all cryptocurrencies across the board, including Bitcoin, is mass adoption. How do they basically take this kind of isolated concept that only a small subset of people in the world know about and bring it to the, to the larger world in a way that can scale? 
And I think if we can convince people that Steam is going to be the blockchain that takes cryptocurrency to the masses, that that's a huge selling point. And what's amazing is we're actually doing it. This isn't a white paper, a theoretical concept. We're literally having hundreds of thousands of people coming to our platform and getting involved in, in this cryptocurrency project because of the amazing platform and community that we have. Uh, one of the favorite websites that I like to look at is this thing called blocktivity.info. Uh, I just posted a, an image of that. Right now, we're sitting on the record for the most transactions in a 24-hour period at over 2 million. We're currently sitting at about 1.5 million uh, per day. Um, actually, I guess we're at 1.5 and our average is 1.7. So it's a little bit of a sleepy day today. But uh, in terms of just supporting what you're saying, you know, we, we seem to have a pretty active community, uh, something like uh, maybe 60 to 65,000 people per day or 60 to 65,000 accounts per day are interacting on this blockchain. I mean, that that I think is pretty substantial. I agree. Um, all right. Um, do you feel like you've addressed the question? Should I move on or do you, are there more? Yeah, I'd like to give other people on the panel some time to talk to, so I won't take, to, take up too much time. All right. So next up, why don't I go to, um, to Carl. Carl, do you want to explain what, what is the biggest problem that Curie sees and how are you guys trying to address it? And this could be more than one problem. It doesn't need to be limited to just one, but what, what do you guys see as the, the number one challenge on the block and what's the approach to, to addressing it? Sure. So, you know, I mentioned that our primary goal is to discover the exceptional content by undiscovered authors. And this actually kind of segues into the, our secondary goal and what I see as a big problem on platform, which is that it's not actually, I feel that curation is not incentivized that well, and I also feel like there the tools to enable effective and efficient curation are lacking. Uh, to my knowledge, there isn't a front end that's really focused on curation with advanced search filtering to be able to, so when you're looking for posts in the first place, to have all the tools available for you to do that. And one of the things that Curie is working on is a front end for Steam that is curation focused. And what that will mean is that there will be a number of advanced search filtering options built into the front end so that anybody can use it who's interested in finding good content. And we hope that this will, uh, again, help with this issue of discovering the good content. And, you know, let's be honest, there's a lot of noise on Steam blockchain. There's a lot of spammers and scammers. It, you can't introduce uh, monetary rewards into an ecosystem like this without making it an attractive target uh, for somebody to come on here and just start spamming plagiarized content. And so this, you know, I think that's actually a huge problem. Um, and enabling people who want to find good content to be able to do that is, is a very important thing. But the front end will go beyond just offering curation tools and will also offer um, basically a, a way for not just Curie, but any, any curation organization uh, we'll be able to use this front end to host uh, Curation Guild or whatever, you know, Curation Community, whatever you want to call it, to host their activities on this front end. And we'll have a submission system and a, and a back end that uh, a curation organization would have access to. And cu currently, Curie uses Streamian, and there's a, a Curie Guild on Streamian, so Curie curators submit posts to uh, this guild on Streamian. And the intention was always that this was supposed to be a pilot project on streaming and that other curation guilds would be able to use this, this uh, same system. And what we've ended up doing is just deciding that we're going to just develop our own front end. And, and instead of relying on, on streaming, we're building it ourselves. And once it's up and running, any curation organization would be welcome to use it. It'll be uh, open to all. And so we're hoping that by both giving the tools to enable curation and also giving the tools to an or enable curation organization, that this will go a long ways towards helping this problem of, of, of actually bringing the, the good content to the top and helping to reduce the noise on platform. So how will you, how will you measure success with that? What would, if this is, if this is working appropriately and things are, are, are uh, it's all green lighted, it's getting implemented and 
um, it's taking off, what, what's that going to look like? How is that going to change the blockchain? What's, what are the benefits of that going to be for this whole community? Sure. So, you know, I, if anybody has ever tried to curate themselves, uh, it, it's one of these things where, you know, if you're not a developer and you don't know a uh, coding language, it's really easy to look at the work that a developer is doing and say, oh, yeah, I can see the value there because there's no way I could do this. Uh, you know, so I think, you know, development projects get a lot of glory and, and, and understandably so. I mean, obviously, yes, they're adding value to the blockchain. But I feel that curation is something where if you haven't tried it yourself, you might think, oh, this is easy. Anybody could curate good posts. Uh, but then when you actually try to do it, uh, it's not an easy thing to do to sort through all the, the noise and to sort through all the spam posting and to sort through all the plagiarization and even to sort through the reposting. Because ultimately, we, we're trying, as Curie, we're trying to re uh, reward content that is original to Steam, not just, you know, not just not plagiarized, not just original to the author. But that was not posted elsewhere online first. We're trying to boost up the relative ranking of Steam on search engines. And so once, you know, once you've tried to curate for a little bit, you realize that the lack of good filtering and good search tools is a real problem. And so just, just by having a front end that does allow a truly advanced search with many, many different ways that you can filter results, uh, that will just in and of itself be, I feel, a significant addition of value to Steam blockchain. I've, I use uh, a SQL-based query system that I've just kind of made myself to, to curate. And, it, and I can tell you that... Uh, being able to filter posts using SQL query has made me a much more efficient curator. And basically this front end will take that so that somebody who doesn't know how to write a SQL query can attain similar results and be able to filter through and find the, the good quality posts much easier. And again, this all goes back to proof of brain is kind of, is supposedly the backbone of this system. And with the rise of being able to buy votes and the rise of, you know, self-voting rings, um, proof of brain may not be an accurate descriptor of what's really going on in the blockchain. And we would like to shift that focus back so that anybody who wants to find quality content has the tools that will allow them to do so. Uh, are, is that going to be an open source tool? Is that going to be proprietary? Is that, what does that look it, like? Oh, sure. It, it, it will, in fact, be open source. I think that's going to make a lot of people quite happy to hear that. Um, all right, I want to I want to keep moving on and just um, and I guess it's my turn just to share. Um, you know, I I started on this platform and thought um, I had a really hard time getting launched here. Uh, I spent about eight months floundering and really not making any progress. Uh, one of my favorite posts that I authored was how I made seven cents in five posts. Um, and I felt like, you know, as a brand new user, there wasn't a lot of options of learning how this place even works. Uh, I was just visiting my dad, trying to explain to my baby boomer father, this is how Steam works. This is what a crypto is. This is where cryptos get value. This is, um, you know, here's like a million different things that you have to understand about this place. Here's where, here's some websites, you get information. Here's where you get community. It's just, it's a monster. Uh, and so when I started there, there wasn't really any community around me. Um, the, the closest thing that I saw was, uh, the steam speak channel that, uh, Fearstickin started and, um, and my, my writing was pretty bad at the time. And so I, one of the things that I did is I created a post that said, Hey, um, this is how you can write better. It got re-steamed and that re-steam just showed me how people can put a lot of time into this place to go grow a to grow their audience and then use that to help other people and it doesn't cost them anything. And I said, okay, this, this place is very helpful uh, or it can be really helpful, but we're not, we're not helping enough people. And so I, I really get worried about uh, user retention on the platform. You know, we get people here and then they leave because they don't get, they don't find a home. They don't get, uh, they don't find a community. They don't feel engaged. Their content goes ignored because there's 40,000 other posts. Uh, and I just feel like it's pretty important to try to get that user engagement up, e even if it's not upvotes, even if it's not other things. Just, hello, how you doing? How is work? You know, what are you frustrated about? Oh, you fell in love. Tell us about the person. You know, just any any of these kind of like day-to-day -day interactions and um 
you know, I, I feel like the community is one of the strongest pieces that we were missing when I started here. And so I said, I'm going to go build a community and I'm going to make it so that um, people can gather up. We, you know, this one is not a particularly specialized community. I think in the future, we're going to have a lot more of these smaller niche or, or niche communities that are designed around very specific issues or people or geographies or things. But, um, you know, I, I think we need some of these big digital cities to pop up and say, you know, find everyone, find anything you need here and, um, and just make it so that this place is a little less, uh, Crimson Clad gave a wonderful description of when you get to the platform and you write, you, you create a post, you research it, you spend eight hours and you post it. It's kind of like singing your heart out to a completely empty auditorium. And um, my goal is to make it so that we are, we're not just singing into an empty auditorium, but we have a community, we have friends, we have family and, and people that we care about that are, are part of this journey with us that help us expand this community as a whole. And, um, and, and ultimately my, my math comes down to a very simple thing. If we're actually following Metcalf's law, Matt Cass Law says if you double the number of people in a community, you can quadruple the price. So I, I feel like how we grow the active user base is going to directly correlate to how, how much we can moon. Uh, and so that's one of the places that I've focused. Uh, and that's what I feel like is the biggest need. The biggest need is people need to feel like they belong here, like they are welcomed here, like the content is good here, like they want, like they can get they could see at the end of the tunnel how they might get rewarded for their content. Um, and so that's what that's what I've been working on and what I've been building. Uh, next up, we got Furion. Furion, what are what are some of the biggest challenges that you see that are out here and how how can we address them? How are you addressing them? Um, what do you think? What are we going to um, what's it going to look like or what's a vision look like if the if the problem actually gets solved? Um, hello, can you can you repeat the last sentence? What what is the what is the ecosystem going to look like if we can solve the problem that you're working on? Okay, so first off, I would like to uh, before before jumping to problems, I would like to start on a positive note. Sure. And say that I'm really happy about the the power of continuous improvement uh, that has been done uh, by the community, and also I have to commend Steemit for all the work they've done. Um, both on the infrastructure and everything else, uh, things are really coming together nicely. Uh, and, and the platform is a lot more mature uh, than it was just a year ago. Um, speaking of uh, problems that I, I might see coming up in the future, one thing that I'm not particularly happy about is uh, how the block space is being used. Uh, right now, um, all the all the things that people post to the, to the blockchain are basically free and fee-less uh, thanks to our uh, bandwidth system. And this system is really cool because we can send uh, transactions, we can send money to anyone at any time completely for free. Uh, and, and this is amazing, like no other currency that I know of uh, has this. Uh, however, uh, for things like uh, non-consensus state and also for posts, uh, it is essentially consuming the, the block space uh, forever. And right now, this isn't a problem because the hardware is still quite powerful. Uh, for example, Samsung just announced 30 terabyte solid state drives uh, recently. Uh, so, so we have uh, a long, uh, like we have a lot of resources uh, to work with. Um, but I suppose in the future, if uh, if we have like another order of magnitude of growth or more, um, perhaps this could start becoming a problem where uh, the state is just growing exponentially. Um, so maybe it would be worth to start thinking about uh, perhaps uh, for for things that aren't say transactions um, to to introduce some kind of fee for the block space or to um, perhaps uh, do another alteration of the rewards curve uh, to penalize um, uh, spammers. Uh, but of course, there's a trade-off between doing that and and uh, degrading user experience for new people. Um, so these things uh, I guess are open to discussion. Uh, yeah, I've seen something. One one of the suggestions I've seen along those lines are 
um, making it so that there's a slightly higher minimum post reward that you can get. And for somebody that's posting novel content and, you know, interacting with the block, that shouldn't really change or affect anything for them. But for people that are really trying to put out 10,000 low quality images and hope for, you know, a penny a piece, um, then this is the kind of thing that could deter that. Um, but you're right. I mean, the the Minnow Support Project through uh, Follow BTC News and through the support of the witnesses that run it, we, we have our own RPC node. That RPC node is using a 512 gig server, uh, and it seems to grow by almost one gig per day uh, on the full RPC node. So that, I mean, that's kind of an alarming rate. You know, it, you, you don't, um, there aren't, I, I, I was looking online just through eBay trying to figure out what, how big of a server can I get? And I could see up to two terabytes and they were um, like $60,000 at that point. So at some point after that, I, I really didn't see anything that I could get in like at least an aftermarket or something. Um, but that's pretty expensive. And you know, it, it's potentially as early as one to two years away. So that makes me nervous. Um, do you? Well, how... I think as as far as RAM uh, requirements go, um, this can be solved in in software. Um, I was talking in more general sense uh, as of uh, um, using the the, the block space. Um, so w where are we going to? Um, so if we can limit the spam, is this just you, you're just talking in terms of? How many how many gigabytes the uh, the entire file size is right now, and how that's going to grow over time? Um, yeah, I mean, I yeah. So that that certainly is um, alarming. I don't think that we're growing that quite at one gig a day, although I haven't looked at the numbers recently. But that's certainly up there. And cert and, and as we scale, I mean, as if velocity comes out and we're able to go see fast signups. I can certainly see how that's going to be, you know, if we if we go from 65,000 active users to 650,000 active users, uh, certainly our blockchain size is going to go uh, up substantially, just as everybody and, and their mother start posting here. Yeah, uh, so for example, uh, the images that are used to through the Steemit app uh, are, are uploaded onto the Amazon cloud, so they're off chain. And perhaps one of the things we could also do with, with posts is um, have them off chain, for example, on something like IPFS, and then just store hashes uh, on, on the blockchain. Um, yeah, that sounds like an interesting plan. Um, OK. I, I don't think there's, there's a, a need to worry about this. Uh, I think there are plenty of potential technical solutions to the problem. Um, it's just something. Uh, I could think of of not being completely happy about. But will, will, that, will that not be against the proof of brain philosophy? Let's say. Did you hear the question, Furian? Would that not be against the proof of brain philosophy? Um, in in what sense? Uh, the curation game uh, is still happening on the blockchain, right? Yes, but uh, the, actually the value that we are voting for then will be then out of the blockchain. And that's for me what it made uh, Steam uh, actually um, a revolutionary concept at the beginning. I agree on the technical aspects, but uh, I disagree on posting or on letting the, um, the content of the post off-chain that will let's say, destroy the magic of, of the Steam blockchain. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one thinking like that, uh, but uh, it's interesting to hear your opinions. I, I think the post uh, object and, and the votes uh, and the payouts and everything like this would still stay on chain. It's just that you would take all these unnecessary bytes and store them in a more um, like scalable and distributed fashion. Um, so you don't need a single node to store everything at once. Uh, and potentially this way, uh, you would you would make scalability a little bit easier. 
uh, but of course um, the, the post is hashed so it's provable that you know you cannot alter it in any way yeah it would seem important to make sure that the uh, in a system like that your voice still stays um, uncensorable right like even even if people go vote me down to a negative rep uh, what I post on the blockchain still stays on the blockchain. It's still viewable and it's still in eight, you know, all the different servers that are out there that are uh, building the chain collectively and storing that chain, you know, and part of what part of what makes it exciting for me to be here is that, you know, after having been on Facebook and gotten kicked off of it for at least five different accounts that I created while being an activist there and they kept removing my account that's one of the main draws that I had coming here. So hopefully as, as those kind of changes are taken into account and thought through and, and people are trying to figure out, you know, how do we, how do we um, decrease the, the block size? It hopefully doesn't interfere with our ability to um, also have immutable content that um, is on a public ledger. I imagine that uh, storing content would um, perhaps become sort of like a social contract for witnesses. Uh, and everybody could replicate this content uh, at, at their own will. Uh, so the, the main benefit, uh, I, I think, of this is open data. Everybody has access to this, and everybody can verify that uh, it's legit and unalterable. Um, all right. So let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep moving on. Uh, I want to stick with the uh, the problem solving question. I want to go down to uh, Cervantes here. C Cervantes, what do you what do you see as the the number one problem on the blockchain? And then what do you how do you sort of envision us fixing it, or what does that look like? Um. Yeah. Actually, um. One. I think one of the main problems we have. Um, right now uh, on, on, on the timid interface, let's say, on top of the blockchain, is the, um, for me, is the content discoverability, meaning that uh, if you were, uh, is, let's, let's say that the platform is just a feed of uh, quite uh, disordered um, posts coming from all kind of languages and all kind of uh, themes and issues and, and uh, qualities, let's say. And um, uh, having done this curation job for quite a, uh, quite a couple of, of, of months, then uh, it's, uh, it's, it will be nice to have some, uh, some interface to, uh, to, to be able to, to, to know that where, wherever you join into, into this platform, then uh, good quality posts are, are ensured. So uh, actually, we are now developing uh, such a system uh, out of the um, based on the Steam network, uh, out of the out uh, of the Steamy.com interface. Uh, and we're trying to do with a small team of, of developers and, and designers is to try uh, to 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 create an interface. Um, uh, what we are we are going to call we have already a name let's say we're going to call it block 64 block 64 will be like like a, a kind of of spanish written um, decentralized online newspaper let's say uh, at the end it's going to be a, a um, a platform where good quality is shown in different categories like politics society different sports and so on and then we are we are developing a kind of of content publication pipeline where, where let's say you will have different roles on, on, on the users logging into the system where you have the, uh, the writers um, um, who will draft the content. You will have the selectors of the curators who will decide which, uh, which content is going to be then published into the headlines. We'll have the correctors who will then jump into, into, the, into, the, into the selected post and correct it on, 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 on chain, let's say. And then you will have the the layouters who will make sure that all these things get uh, in a consistent way to show it in the, on the front end. And you will have, let's say, a, a, the final validators. And and all these roles are are also will be also elected uh, as a kind of consensus, uh, like the witness are, so that it's actually a dynamically system 
where all these roles are making sure that the content is filtered and shown uh, and to make sure that on the front line we have a good quality. So at the end, uh, I think that's one of the main problems we have, uh, the user experience that we don't have. Uh, we uh, we um, sometimes uh, the posts that are trending in different categories are not uh, based on quality, but just based sometimes on things like um, blackboards or other kind of, uh, of people voting for other uh, for other criteria other than quality. And this is something that we are, uh, as a project, as a witness, actively working on and developing. We're at the early stages. We have been working not only for a couple of months, but I think that could be great. And it could be also extensible also to, um, to, to other DAPPs. So it's, let's say, one of the first DAPPs that we are developing as part of the, of the project. Yes. I mean, it always it always strikes me when um, I've been I've been working on this project and running a community of fourteen thousand people. Like, you know, you get up to a couple thousand people, and everybody starts having that same kind of question and same kind of curiosity of how do we how do we run a central channel for this? How do we manage the messaging that we're putting out? How do we how do we figure out how to talk about ourselves? Who can talk about us? Um, and that actually, like it, it, if you're not involved in the bigger communities, it might not, you know, really keep you up at night. But, you know, the Minnow Support Project has certainly had to go build a number of tools just to be able to, to do some of the things that you're talking about. And hopefully, you know, we'll see more tools that come out of uh, the Cervantes Witness, more tools that come out of the, um, what Steemit is doing with communities, and um, maybe some of the search that comes through what you're working on and what Curie is working on, and hopefully we'll actually have good content discovery. Um, and I, you know, I, what I've seen is that at the very top, when you're looking at trending, sometimes trending is just uh, overloaded by people that have uh, sort of vote swapping arrangements. And on the other end, at the very bottom of the, of the rewards pool, I see a lot of like uh, abuse and fraud there I see some good posts that are sitting in, in the middle range there where they're not just hovering at the bottom to scam stuff. They're not all the way at the top where it's vote swapping, but they're in the middle. Uh, but like you said, finding finding good quality content sitting in that batch is not, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And at the end of the day, what I do, I just, I, I know who, who I like as, as, as a person uh, and I, I follow them and I don't, I, and I follow just the authors I like, uh, instead of just um, of just being open to uh, to new discoveries, and that's a fundamental problem because then you just get uh, isolated into your own selected user of authors that you are reading because you don't trust that the feed is going to be good. Okay, I want to I want to make sure that Block Brothers has a chance to talk here too. So, Exile, what do you what do you see as the biggest challenge on the block these days? What what do we need to be? What are you guys working on, or what do you think the community needs to be working on? What do we what do we what do we have to solve next here? Uh, hello, this is Exile. Uh, sometimes I'm really happy that I've been here from the beginning. Uh, I've seen pretty much anything since July 2016. Uh, I've been through what I call the dark ages. So uh, around in the middle of 2017, where everybody was leaving the steam price went to 10 to 6 or to 6 cents and everybody said basically this place is shit and then slowly a couple of people stayed and everything came back again and we are where we are today uh, with steam at three dollars and all the engagement and development that we have so uh, from my point of view i think it's going extremely well with the steam blockchain and i'm extremely happy about the way things are developing uh, so when it comes to that, very happy. Uh, problems of Steam today, uh, it's already been named. Uh, it's definitely communities. Uh, the problem is if you try to curate on Steam today and you go to the new page, you will see 10 posts every second. And it's just impossible to curate that at the moment. And it's hard for new people to find their place uh, in, the Steam block, in, the, in the Steam community, I guess. And it would be so much easier if you could just find a community where you can try to engage with the people that do things that you like. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I hope uh, it comes out very, very soon. Um, 
Yeah, uh, what we do uh, as Block Brothers is we made Steamify, and what we hear as feedback is that it has improved engagement with the Steam blockchain tremendously because it gives interaction. So when you add your username to the application, uh, you get notified when somebody posts uh, of comments on your post or when you get a vote and you can go and check it out straight away. And it just gives a way more interactive experience with the whole blockchain. And I think uh, yeah, what we have done with this app is adding tremendous value in that department. And uh, I can't wait for the Android version to come out so that we can share it with the rest of the community and anybody and everyone can use this app. And I think, yeah, that's really something positive that we bring to the blockchain. And yes, there are some problems, of course. Uh, um, we are in the in the stages of transitioning our server. Uh, we had a 32 gigabyte server. It's almost full uh, the, that's because there's so many transactions on the blockchain at the moment that a 32 gigabyte is no longer enough so we have to upgrade to 64 gigabyte and it actually went so fast that i'm not sure how long 64 gigabytes will be enough and that's my oh well that is one of the concerns i have as a witness is uh, yeah how much uh, gigabytes will we need in the future if the steam blockchain keeps growing growing and growing and I know the team, the steaming steam team is already working on it, so that makes me happy. Personally, I can't do anything about it because well, I don't develop the blockchain. So this is why I have faith in the team that they can make it work. And yeah, all in all, I'm very happy. Uh, here's my here's a, my, the next question for the group, and I'll I'll just uh, we're not going to go in order anymore. We'll ju I just want this to be last thirty minutes of this to just be a bit more open. Um, you know, just go ahead and talk and I'll try to, when in doubt, please defer to the person that's a higher rank than you. Um, but I, I just like to ask the group, um, what do you, do you guys feel like there's good alignment with what Steemit is working on? Uh, because they, because they do have so much stake and because they are such a, a strong presence here, do you feel like they are, are working on the right things? Or, are we well aligned? Like, do you feel like your goals as a witness and what they're working on are, are well aligned? Or do you feel like there's a big disconnect there? And I'll just leave that open to anybody that feels like answering it. Uh, can I answer this, Excel? Sure. I think at the moment the team is working on the, on the right stuff. Uh, it's super important for blockchain is that it's being able to scale. That's what they're working on. Uh, we we have seen with Bitcoin, for instance, that they can't scale. And at the moment, there are more transactions on the network than it can handle. The whole thing comes down to a halt. So that is really important that the focus is there. And uh, I think what's important, uh, what they're doing is they are trying to build the best solid, stable blockchain as they can. And that's what we need. We have a community around the blockchain that can help improve it. Uh, through the creation of content, but also through development. And you see it in DTube, DSound, uh, DMania. All these applications are being built, and the Steemit team doesn't have to do anything. There are third parties that are building this for us. And here you can see the growth, but what they need and what we all need is a solid, stable blockchain that anybody can use. And if they put their focus on that, I'll be extremely happy. Does anybody else want to pitch in? Do you feel like Steemit is working on the right stuff? Yeah, Furion here. Um, I don't know for sure, but I think that if somebody has a good idea and a talent to execute it, uh, they should just go for it. And I think uh, Steemit team is very open uh, and would gladly support uh, new initiatives uh, that get traction. Um, so, yeah. Anyone else for is Steemit working on the right stuff? Um, yes, um, Pablo speaking, uh, Cervantes. Um, I think basically, yes. Um, as you said before, as the main stakeholders, um, they are able to mostly control, control where the, the forks are going. So it makes sense that they are actually the ones who are doing the main development. Whereas I would also like to have a more uh, um, witness uh, involvement in uh, 
the, the technical part of, of, of the test process and so on, which uh, um, I don't I don't think it's it's, it's enough. So just uh, to have uh, to have to have uh, a more technical involvement on, uh, of the of the witness and also uh, to to let's say give them the means of uh, yes, uh, of of doing tests and or doing uh, the, the, the take a more active role in the in the development of the of the blockchain. Um, that drives me to a, at a point uh, which is uh, quite um, interesting um, and important reading the discussions that have been uh, on the on the witness uh, chats lately it's about the discussion about the SPD uh, steam dollar to back or not to back um, uh, interesting perhaps I just uh, that in also into the room um, if I hear uh, the most or I will say 100% of the 4,000 users that are writing into our server they are against the fact that uh, the SPD should peg, um, mostly because these are mostly author and content writers, and all the content writers are today uh, happy that the markets are valuating the Steam dollar in a higher uh, in in a higher price, and that the Steam blockchain is actually still overproducing SPDs, uh, and it's quite good for authors. And on the other side, uh, there is the defendants, but uh, it's more on some high stakeholders or uh, or, or witness or whales which are defending the pegging uh, because uh, that should be good for um, for things like e-commerce um, so and I think that that's uh, one of the interesting discussions that are going on right now uh, and uh, for, uh, coming back to steam it involvement or not I am not sure today what is let's say uh, steam it um, view on, on that if so it's going to which solution is going to be the best solution is going to be this uh, back to five dollar solution uh, or whatever so um, yeah anybody feel like chiming in on high spd or uh, a completely pegged spd i think uh, this is xr sorry uh, I think Androiki said two or three weeks ago on here that it's not a priority of the team to do anything about it. So uh, me personally, I think the high SPD is fantastic for the platform at the moment. It helps us grow. Uh, authors are being rewarded more. And for us as Block Brothers, it, uh, well, it helps us pay for servers and development. So we can hire an external dev now to develop Android, uh, Steamify Android for us with this high SPD, and we also paid ahead, six months ahead, uh, we paid Prefix, who provides our service six months ahead with a high SPD. So in that regard, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm really, really happy with it, and I hope it will stay like this for a little while longer. Um, yeah, when it comes to pegging, uh, my idea is, uh, the, the higher Steam gets, the more Steam dollars will be printed because about half of the rewards you get on Steam it is one on one converted to Steam dollars. So uh, the higher Steam gets, the more Steam dollars will enter the market. And at some point, I think this will uh, put pressure on the price and it will go back to where we want it to go at some point is one dollar worth of Steam. And yeah, then there is no problem. So I wouldn't force it at the moment. I think the problem with if you would fix it right now, uh, we can do that with a, a reverse conversion so that the people that are in the know, uh, like me and everybody that's listening, could instantly uh, convert their Steam to Steam dollars and sell them on the market. And I don't think this would be uh, a good idea for Steam or it, it won't look good. So uh, I, I would say let it just play out, uh, give it more time, uh, don't make instant decisions just because it's a little bit higher than it should be. Uh, let's wait a little longer and yeah, that's how I see it. Anybody else want to chime in on the SPD versus Steam debate? Seeing none. We got about uh, 23 more minutes here. Um, I guess I guess when I'm thinking of um, you know, we want to we want to see Steam grow, and we want to see it sustainably grow. Uh, what What do you guys What do you guys see as some of like 
uh, the most important things to consider as we grow? What do you think that we should be wary of as we grow? Um, you know, I'm trying to leave this fairly open-ended, but uh, growth is going to happen. What's going to help that? What's going to hurt that? And what, what can we do about that to make life any better? Uh, very intentionally keeping that an open question. But uh, regarding STEAM growth, what what's on your minds as you're uh, thinking about your witness and thinking about the STEAM ecosystem? Um, this is Exile. I'm not sure if anybody else wants to answer first. I've been talking for a while. Go for it, Exile. All right. Well, uh, for me and for us as a witness, we, uh, we love to see growth. And you see it uh, since I joined. Uh, if you look at how it was and how it is now and how many active members there are and how many accounts have been created, then it's fantastic. Uh, I love seeing this. And I think growth will result in an increase of the Steam price at some point. It won't happen straight away, but if enough people join and use your blockchain, then we will see the Steam price grow. And this is well, excellent for everybody who has Steam and has, has, has powered up and has the yeah the, the ability to wait until things grow even bigger. My concern is that the blockchain won't be able to scale. Uh, I don't know enough about it, so it is a small concern of mine, but I also know that I can't do anything about it as a, as a witness. We don't develop the blockchain. So this is where I put faith in the team, but scaling or not being able to scale past a certain point would be my only concern uh, at this moment in time. And again, we just have to have faith in the team that they can do it. And yeah, and it's all good. Uh, the rest of it. So yeah, I'm happy uh, the way things are going. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what I have to say about it. I'll jump in here. So I think a point that you made aggro earlier, as far as new members finding their home is extremely important, especially as we grow. There's an experience that's very different for a new user compared to the people who've been here for more than six months. And I think it's hard to put yourself in the shoes of a new user coming in. There's so much information. Cliff, thanks, Mino. Um, There's so much new information, and it's very hard to find your home and to get established. And so I think having lots of people in the community like the Minnow Support Project that basically reach out to new members, hold their hand, and help them find their home is going to be extremely important as we move forward. Um, do you see that as like, we're, we're still a pretty big group. Um, do you think that we're going to need lots more splintering where we have all these, uh, teeny tiny groups and they're all focused on very niche things? Do you see that as, uh, it's best for us to stay in this big, um, formation? How do you, how do you think that we take new users and, uh, help them find a home best with, what do you think I, the process for that looks like? I think that the communities are going to have a large role to play. And I think uh, over time, the onboarding process is going to become a lot more distributed. There'll be a lot of different leaders in the community who are able to find members that resonate with them and help onboard them into their community. Uh, and then I think there's still a role to play for larger organizations such as the Minnow Support Project, which have more of an all-encompassing onboarding process and basically just help people get acclimated and introduced to the platform as a whole. So I think it's a little bit of both. How, how do we handle how do we handle training with that? You know, again, just um, not more than 24 hours ago, I sat down with my dad and he's 72 and he wrote his first post and you know, going through what's a Steam, what's a Steam Power, what's a Steam Back Dollar, how do I post, where do I get images from, how do I do this markdown editing, um, you know, where does the value come from, you know, there there's a lot of questions that come into this, and you know, I, as a result, I go and I put out orientation posts every every couple weeks or something, but beyond beyond that, how do we actually like how do we handle the training of taking somebody that's, you know, uh, mama Facebook or Papa Twitter and, and bringing them over into the steam world and, 
you know, up to speed, but it not take them six months to figure out what this thing is, or ultimately they get here, can't figure it out and then leave. Yeah, I definitely think education is a huge part of onboarding, and that's actually been one of my big focuses uh, for the past year or so. Uh, I don't know how m many members of the community know, but I, I was one of the people that worked to get the welcome page and the FAQ up on steamit.com, and I still put a lot of effort in trying to maintain those and keep them up to date. Uh, there's two things. One of them is I, I think in order for people to be successful, they are going to have to put in the time to do some homework. And that does include reading the FAQ, reading the blue paper, reading the welcome page, and really learning. Um, I think people who just kind of jump in and expect to be successful without understanding how everything is working and taking the time to do that are going to run into more challenges than the people who invest the time. And another challenge that I see is that there's a whole bunch of different guides out there. And even the guides that are supposed to help people in a way are almost overwhelming because there's so many of them. Some of them are out of date. Difficult for new members to even find the right resources to teach them, which is why I do think that having some central core resources like the FAQ page and the welcome page are going to be essential. And I know um, Steemit has hinted at it. I don't know where it falls in their priorities, but I believe at some point they want to have more of a tutorial onboarding process actually through steamit.com, similar to a lot of other websites with interactive tutorials uh, to basically onboard users automatically just through the technical aspects and the user experience portions of the website. Yeah, you know, all these video games have that where before you start running around and shooting everything, you know, they put you in a little practice room and you learn how to switch between guns and shoot, you know, just like some kind of what i don't know the exact blog equivalent of that of but you know here welcome to the page click this let's walk you through what these terms mean click this this is where your feed is this is your reputation and just kind of walk people through uh some of their main stats their main criteria and just at least give them something to go off of to get started yep exactly uh other folks want to chime in on on yeah. uh, sort um, of growth Servant is speaking, um, I think I think Ned was asked a similar question uh, during one of the last panels of the Steam Fest in Lisbon this year, and it was about if I think if I remember well was if he think if he thought that Steamit will have success if uh, it was not based on a reward system uh, of a cryptocurrency. Um, uh, I think uh, I, he didn't gave a real answer to that uh, in my in my opinion i think definitely not um definitely um people will not be in steamit.com if they were if if, uh, if steam as a currency will not be rewarded to, to the to the posters and the voters and the commenters therefore i think to be able to reach the growth that platforms like facebook instagram twitter uh, and so on is reaching uh, definitely, the end user should uh, should would, should want to be into the platform, even if if it's not being rewarded. Just because it's a nice platform, you are knowing people because it's nice to use. The interface is great, uh, and, and and so on. Uh, as as soon as the people only join the platform because they are being rewarded, and not because of the experience, then I think growth will be in possible and that independent of the technical aspects of, of the of the blockchain reaching his capacity limits um, so we we spoke about one of the main uh, what are currently what our biggest um, biggest demographic is and that's content creator and content you know uh, consumer but we also have devs and we also have merchants and those are sort of the next uh, and, and I guess I would also say investors. So what what do we, and you can address this for any one of those kind of stakeholder groups, uh, what do we need to do to attract more investors? What do we need to do to attract more devs? What do we need to do to attract more merchants? What's going to make this ecosystem better for them? And this is open to the, to the panel. Well, I guess for investors, oh, sorry, this is Exile. For investors, 
it's uh, most important to have a use case for their Steam without them having to block for it. Uh, I think that is a huge problem at the moment. Uh, if you're an investor, uh, you, you stake your Steam, you have Steam power, and then what, right? You can't do nothing with it except upvote some people or you can delegate it. Um, but there needs to be another use case. Uh, at the moment, voting bots are really popular as a good return on investment. Um, you see them popping up everywhere. And I, I think actually things like that are an incentive for an investor to power up and delegate your Steam to a voting bot because the return on investment is so good that, of course, this has consequences of its own. Uh, I, let's not go too far into that, but I, I would like to see yeah, uh, ways for Steam uh, well, to be vested and have some nice return on investment while doing so. And of course, when s and come out, uh, Steam will have that use case. It will, uh, uh, I'm not sure if anybody knows this, or I think everyone knows this, is that uh, when SMT comes out, uh, anyone can create a token on the Steam blockchain. And to drive this token, you need Steam Power because Steam Power pays for bandwidth on the network. So that would increase the price of Steam. That's what I suspect. But again, it doesn't give a ROI, uh, a return on investment, unless you can yeah, somehow, yeah, Maybe I'm not sure how to explain it further than that, but you, that would definitely bring in investors if we find a, a use case uh, for return on investment for investors. So other folks, the question is, what do we need to do to attract, uh, pick your demographic of either um, sort of merchants, we have uh, developers and we have investors. What, what do you think, what are, what are some of the things that are missing or what could we do to help onboard uh, more of those subgroups. I let someone else talk, otherwise I'm talking too much. All right. If nobody wants to field this, I mean, Cervantes, why don't you take a shot at the question and then um, we only have 10 minutes left, so maybe I'll go ahead and uh, let people have some closing statements here. Okay, so, so I, I don't say anything. Uh, no, side, right? no, go ahead, go ahead. Ah, give us, yes. give us an answer. No. Yes, I mean, uh, just a small thing. I think, um, I think developers um, were um, have a good. Uh, there is a good way and a good use case of uh, of um, rewarding developers, and that's. Uh, the Utopian project, I think that's a great project, uh, who exactly uh, covered that need of how do you reward people who are the technical freaks that are not able to write posts, but they are contributing somehow also to the uh, estimate uh, ecosystems. Um, uh, and that's exactly that kind of um, of, uh, of use case as we are looking. And in, ter in terms of investors, there's something we need uh, for people who use Steam then as a payment as well, it's, uh, we need to go mainstream on online payments uh, and we need a wallet and we need also a, um, a good, nice, well-written, deployed um, iPhone and Android wallet for it. Um. All right. Yeah, I mean, having having some of these tools would be pretty fantastic to... Uh... You know, we're we're still at the infant stage of this. You know, the the web the the blockchain hasn't been here for even two full years yet. Um, so yeah, we still have a couple pieces that it would be great if um, we could get developers to go work on, and hopefully through Utopian or hopefully through uh, finding ways to gather these developers together and sort of share their skills, we'll get there. Um, okay. So we're we're getting down. We got about nine minutes left. Um, so why don't you why don't you leave us with a closing thought? And I'm gonna I'm gonna make it very open ended. Uh, you can you can talk about whatever. You get about a minute or two to just sort of um, sum up this conversation or uh, put t put together the vision. Uh, give a pitch for why somebody should vote for you. What, you guys can take this in any direction you want, but you got you, you each get about two minutes to sort of uh, close up the discussion. And uh, as per usual, let's go do this in uh, descending order of uh, 
the the current uh, witness rank. So let's go start with Tim Cliff. Uh, Tim, would you care to kind of close out this panel discussion for us? Tim? All right, maybe I lost Tim. Oh, he's here. Sorry, I had my mute button on. Uh, this is Tim Cliff. I uh, just want to end with saying this has been a great panel. It's been uh, a wonderful time talking to everybody that's here. I think there's been a lot of great ideas that have been shared. I agree with most of the perspectives that have been sharing, and I think uh, overall the STEAM platform is on a good track, and I'm really excited. All right, awesome. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Kiri and, and Carl, do you want to give us some uh, closing thoughts here? Sure. And, you know, I think we're all kind of cautiously optimistic and excited to see what form communities take when they come out. And that may be the solution to some of these previous questions that, we, that we've that we been talking about. And I didn't mention previously, and I should have, that Kiri has sort of been planning ahead for the eventual release of communities. And we have a, a marketing budget set aside for a, an advertising campaign that we'll do once communities comes out. And we're in the beginning stages of also creating an animated video that we'll use in this uh, marketing campaign. And Curie has supported what we call sub-communities. And they are basically separate organizations that are sort of a pre what we consider to be a precursor to the communities that will come out. And we have basically enabled both regional and interest-specific uh, communities to come up with their own uh, rules and, and regulations and develop their own teams of curators. And then Curie has supported these uh, sub-communities by following behind the votes of the uh, sub-community curation teams with a reduced vote percentage vote from the Curie account. So we've already sort of started building communities, and, and we hope to integrate the Curie sub-communities with whatever form uh, communities do take when, when they come out. And I would say that if you're considering to vote for Curie as a witness, that know that if you're doing so you're voting to support an organization that tries really hard to actually put the brain and proof of brain and that we're trying to find the exceptional content and with that we're trying to tackle that issue of the uh, trending page being full of self votes and 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 really not the greatest content so you know for one thing you're helping support that if you vote for Curie for witness because the Curie witness rewards go directly back towards funding the Curie curators and also in fact uh, adding steam power to the Curie account to increase the vote there but also that we we take our job as a witness very seriously we just launched a full node yesterday in fact and you can read a witness update on the Curie blog but we now have a full RPC node up and we're in the process of uh, putting up a backup full node as well and we'll have so we'll have it so that we've got uh, two full nodes going. We're also in the middle of upgrading our witness uh, server so that it can run on completely on memory instead of on swap. And we are committed to continuing to invest in in upgrading both the witness server infrastructure and also the RPC nodes to support health of Steam blockchain in general. And you know, basically, we're just we are full in on Steam. You know, everybody involved in Curie is there because we we love the Steam blockchain and we see a lot of potential there. So, you know, no matter what challenges face it, we're all in this together and we're working towards the same thing. And uh, thanks again for letting me be part of this panel and speaking on behalf of Curie. It's been a, a real pleasure. All right, it's glad I'm glad to have you. Um, this is Agrode. Um, so the I guess my thought is the uh, to me, I still think that growing communities on here is one of the most important things that we could do. Um, and when I look at where Andrarchy is and where Ned is and where, where the Steemit uh, company is talking about taking us, I'm, I'm optimistic and looking forward to what they're doing. Um, and I feel like a lot of the, the top 20 witnesses actually have pretty good alignment with the vision that Steemit is working on and what we would want them doing. Uh, there are some minor tweaks here and there, but largely I feel like the, the, the witnesses and the company are in alignment, and that actually feels pretty good. Uh, it doesn't feel forced. It feels like we've had some good discussions around these things, and, uh, and it's moving in the right direction. And so that, that brings me back to really wanting to get to the, the four different stakeholder groups that I see of the active uh, consumers and producers of content, which is usually or seems to be the same person, the investors, the merchants, and the developers. And, um, you know, I, I, we have a curation group and we curate in a bunch of different categories and we do try to launch people and we do try to build communities. Um, I, I, I think I'm a little unique in, in 
a perspective of, um, you know, there's not specific things that I'm looking for for the people that we onboard. Um, you know, when I started here, I started as a pretty bad writer. Uh, and I think I've gotten pretty, I've gotten a lot better since like the first couple posts or the first couple months of posts that I did, but it took time. And if, and if somebody just looked at me and said, oh, Agrid's a crappy writer, to hell with him, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten here. So rather than, rather than just look for like the one author, the one dev, the one something, um, or the one merchant, you know, I, I, it is my thought that if we just bring everybody on board, uh, eventually we're going to find the right content. Uh, eventually one of those people that we bring on board is going to be an amazing photographer or artist or musician. Uh, we're going to have uh, some, it might be somebody that when they start, they know no programming, but they fall in love with Steam and they start programming a ton. And maybe they develop the best applications of the modern wallets or the hardware wallets or desktop wallets that a lot of us are looking for. Uh, it's my thought that if we can just build tons of community and help trap people into this one, you know, get our claws into them, show them a little bit of rewards and uh, show them that this is a nice place to be, that they're not going to want to leave. And as we keep growing critical mass, the value of the token will go up. As the value of the token goes up, more people will come. As more people come, the value of the token goes up and just try to trap us in this upward moving cycle. Um, and so my goal is to keep building community through the radio station, keep building community through the, the Discord group, keep building community through uh, some of the bots and the tools that we've made and the way that we share those with other people for free um, and just do whatever we can to, um, you know, we have a very simple mission here, spread the values of peace, abundance, and liberty, uh, try to grow the Steam ecosystem and train and retain new members on the platform. And um, currently, I, I feel lucky to say, you know, like a ship captain, I can just say, stay the course we're on the right course still uh there might be a time where the course needs to change but at the moment especially in our infancy um the mission of this place that we started with i still feel is correct uh and so that's what i'll keep working on and uh you know i'll ask please vote for me you know we we even in the top 20 we need your votes uh furion you're up next i would like to thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, forum uh, it has been uh, fun, and I learned something new uh, in terms of uh, what problem to tackle next. Uh, so all in all, it has been a really positive experience. Thank you. Well, glad to have you here. Thank you, Furian. Um, uh, Cervantes, you're up next. Yes, thank you. I would like also to, to thank you, Agret. It's a great pleasure to be here on the panel and to be uh, also the so-called running up uh, witness will be part of the panel. Um, um, yes, and uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, I, uh, I um, use the possibility to ask for your votes. We backup witness need your votes to keep our positions or to even uh, go up some positions that will help us to uh, grow all of our projects and support our speaking uh, Spanish speaking community. Um, and I and I recommend you to go out, get some Spanish lessons because we are missing a lot of great content in Spanish right now on the platform that you don't uh, you cannot read <laughs> and go out and uh, learn some salsa or rumba or reggaeton or some Latin uh, um, dance because on the next team fest I think uh, I hope that Schnick will be playing some salsa and not uh, techno so and we will have a lot of uh, nice looking people dancing uh, Spanish uh, dance on the dance floor because the community is going to be huge. All right, Exile, you get to actually we have Androarchy here too. So maybe Exile can close us out from the witnesses. And if Androarchy feels like giving kind all of right. a closing statement, I'd welcome that too. All right, thank you. Uh, first of all, Agro, thank you for this invite. Uh, it's actually been the first public ex uh, um, appearance of uh, Block Brothers uh, since we started four months ago. So thank you so much for this opportunity. It was a lot of fun, and also thank you uh, to all the other witnesses for uh, 
having these fantastic discussions with uh, with each other. Um, what you can expect from us in the future is a development uh, in the form of apps and tools. Uh, most notably, uh, Steamify Android is coming and uh, Steam Turbine. That's what we are currently developing. And we have a lot of cool things and ideas in store that we want to develop and to do that, we would definitely would like to ask you for your witness vote. Uh, as you know, the higher you are on the witness list, the more uh, steam you get, or the more blocks you get assigned, and the more steam you get. So you get a little bit more income, so you can well pay for development and all that. So uh, we would like to ask for your vote if you think we are worth it. And yeah, thank you so much for uh, for attending this uh, this panel. All right. And Jarky, are you are you present here? Can you uh, can you unmute? No, oh, he he vanished for a moment. I don't know if he's gone forever. But um, all right, I think uh, I'll I'll take that as a sign. We're at one oh three. Uh, you've been listening to the Steam Witness Panel discussion. Uh, this is a monthly event. Uh, so the last the last Saturday of every month at eleven a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. That's sixteen hundred UTC. I'll keep hosting these. Uh, I'll keep rotating through um, primarily the top 20 witnesses. I'll keep inviting one or two of the backup witnesses uh, to go share their experience as well so we get to hear from them. Um, this has been a lot of fun to go host. I'm very grateful for the for the time that not only they, they put into this one show, that is such a small percentage of the hours and hours and hours that it takes to be a witness. and. Um, you, you really pour your heart into this thing and, and do your best to create tools, uh, help curate, build community, uh, or even or even try to get some type of commerce launched out of here. Um, you know, I feel like there's a, a lot of very, very smart people uh, working to help grow this ecosystem. And for that, I'm quite grateful. Um, so this has been recorded as well. I'm going to go post the recording pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, while while getting that recording up there, I'll uh, I'll play a little bit of music. We'll do some pirate radio. Uh, in case you're not used to the fact that we have a radio station, you've been listening to MSP Waves Radio. Um, this is how we handle uh, playing music, doing talk shows, and there's a a wide variety of shows that are available. Not quite 24/7, but we have probably 30 to 40 hours of content that's available per week out of here. Uh, in the same format. So I would welcome you all to join us. Um, thank you to the audience. I, I see some some uh, some whales and some of the, the most highest uh, followed people that are around in the audience. So uh, bid bot owners, witnesses, uh, merchants, you know, there's a lot of people that are interested in this and trying to see where we're going to go. And I just like to Thank you for your time today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to the witnesses. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been listening to MSP Waves Radio. That's the end of the Steam Witness panel. And uh, let's go do some pirate radio while we uh, while we get the recording up and on there. <laughs>